Hello, this is where we left off, a slime that we can't do anything to and heroes that can't do anything to it. So we're going to go ahead and make it so that when we click on the slime, it dies and gets injured and suffers horribly. That's what RPG characters do. They torture monsters. Anyhow, in order to make it clickable, we need something that understands the idea of a click, and that's what we're going to create now. We're going to create a new script, which we will call Death Click. This is my second time recording this episode, by the way, because I left the mouse or the uh, voice off, because I'm not very bright sometimes. Here in Death Click, we're going to want to put this on a camera, so let's go ahead and just drop Death Click on the main camera. I've actually already got a slot for it. There. And uh, we're going to make sure that we always have a camera component attached to the same game object. The reason for that is because we're not going to continuously check whether or not we have a camera attached. Instead, we're just going to assume that we do. Here in update, we're going to say if uh, uh, input dot get mouse button down zero. So if we've left clicked, and now we want to do a raycast. So ray and ray, and then what are we going to get a raycast from? Well, we get it from the camera. Lowercase c camera is the camera that we are. It is the camera attached to the same game object. <coughs> Screen point to Ray. Well, which screen point? How about the mouse's screen point? And then we want to raycast hit. The way that raycasts work is you do physics.raycast and then you put in the ray. The problem is that this returns a boolean, as you can see. So we can tell that we hit something, but we can't tell what we hit. Fortunately, there are a lot of other options, such as adding in a raycast hit hit info argument which we'll do now. If we can type. There we are. So this will say raycast and if you hit something fill the hit up with whatever it is but it still returns a boolean so we can tell that we hit something. So we can say okay we hit something and hit contains whatever we hit. So we say what did we hit? Well we hit a battle unit. Hit.transform sorry dot get component battle unit. So if we hit something that's not a battle unit, debug.log, that's not a battle unit. Else, we did hit a battle unit, debug.log, bang. And then we say bu.hp minus minus. Easy enough, right? Uh, we also want to have a variant where we say debug.log, clicked on nothing. So that covers all of our bases. Let's go ahead and go in here and hit play. Clicked on nothing. Clicked on nothing. Oh, we're not clicking on anything. Why aren't we clicking on anything? Well, that's because we, we don't have any kind of collider here on the slime. Let's go ahead and add one. Spherical collider should work. It's not really in the right position, but that's okay. There we are. Let's make it a trigger, because we don't need it to be bouncing off of things. Bang, bang, bang. But our HP isn't working right. In fact, all of our HPs have reverted to zero because of something I did in the last episode. But even though it's zero, you can tell it's not decreasing anymore. Well, actually it is decreasing, but our uh, indicator isn't showing it. So if I go up to 10, and keep your eye on the right-hand side here, and I click, you can see how it goes down? but the indicator isn't showing it going down. Now there are a lot of really efficient ways to update that indicator, none of which are really worth doing. Um, we're not planning to update hundreds of indicators every frame, so we might as well just go ahead and update the ones that happen to be on the screen full on. If it turns out that that's too slow in the long run, we can always make it more efficient later. There's no real reason to um, be conservative until you have run out of resources in this case. Uh, it's better to optimize late rather than optimize early. So here is the battle status indicator, and here in update we can just say set reference unit uh, reference. And now when we go back into our game and we click, Now, that's actually pretty aggressive. We could optimize it a little bit by saying, well, make sure that the HP is actually changed before you update. We'll worry about that later. For now, this is fine. But it doesn't die when we hit zero. How are we going to make it die when we hit zero? 
Well, the answer to that is why the HP is at all reverted to zero when we started, and that's because we need to change the behavior of the battle unit. Here is our battle unit as it stands, but what we really want to do is when the HP changes, we want to do a whole bunch of checks and make sure that the HP is changing to something we want. So rather than HP and MP, we want to do underscore HP and underscore MP. That might sound weird, um, but it's actually quite useful. And the reason that it's useful is because then we can say public float HP, and then we can do uh, get return HP and set HP equals value. And we can do the same for MP. Now just to make sure that we understand where we're coming from, what I'm going to do is here in the set, I'm going to add in some debug code right now. So we go back over here and we'll find that the slime's HP reverts to zero because this is not HP. This is underscore HP. Now this is a little bit of a trick and it's easy to get a little bit confused because what the inspector here is showing is it's showing us underscore HP, but it ignores the underscore. When we're in code and we type HP, we're getting the getter and setter. But here in the inspector, we are getting just the underscore HP variable directly. This is actually really important. Um, and I'm going to show you why. And I'm going to show you why. Look down here. I'm going to set this HP to 10. Nothing showed up here. This didn't show up there. Now why is that important? Because I can say this. Oh, let's go ahead and leave that in. I can say this. If HP is less than or equal to 0, destroy game object. Oh, lowercase g. Obviously that's not the death animation we'll go with in the long run, but it is important because it means that if I set this to zero and hit enter, it doesn't delete itself. So while I'm inspecting it, while I'm not, you know, script editing the HP while we're not in battle, I can't accidentally delete the object. And that used to be a big problem for me where I would accidentally kill monsters in edit mode and stuff like that. Not a problem anymore. So we'll set this to 10. And then we'll hit play. Now look down here. Bang, HP changed to 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and dead. Easy enough. So getters and setters are slow. Um, they're, not, they're not like abysmally slow. They're not as slow as linked lists. But they are a bit slow, and a lot of people take that uh, to heart. A lot of people optimize really, really early. Um, and they just approach things from a very optimal perspective. And that's fine if you already know exactly what you need to do all the time. But if you're kind of feeling things out, don't feel trapped by the need to optimize. Uh, eventually you'll run into a wall and you'll realize that something really did need to be optimized and you can go back and optimize it. But for 99% of your development work, this kind of, of thing works fine. Uh, it's much better to work with clarity rather than work optimally because it's very, very easy to get lost when you're developing a game. Super easy. Anyhow, that was eight and a half minutes, which seems like a decent enough time for this to take. And uh, in, in those eight and a half minutes, we have killed our first enemy. Wah! But there is one little problem I want to show you. Mm. See these buttons? When I click on the button, it says clicked on nothing. Mm. Now, the button does count as having been clicked, but it's not the same events chain. So when I click on the button, the button counts as being clicked. And then in my frame update, I get that click again and I check to see whether I clicked on a monster. That might bite us in the butt, so we're going to have to be careful how we handle ray casts from a mouse because the mouse events are going to be mostly about either menu selection or triggering a, a, a technique. So we're going to have to minimize our use of the death click because falling through from a button click and accidentally killing off a player because you clicked on them because you were clicking on a button, not a very good idea. So we're going to have to be careful of that. And if you didn't understand that, don't worry. It'll become really clear later on.